Well, who's ready for the word of God tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, well, we've been working on a series. Who remembers what the series is called? It's over my shoulder. Amen. It's called what? It's called potential. Am, am I loud? Am I, am I okay? Amen. Praise God. It's called potential. And if you look right underneath it, it's called what? What? My unseen reality. And, and, and how many of you know I said this before when we first started the series? Um, that, that how many of you have experienced some warfare in your life? Anybody? Amen. And, and anybody experienced some pushback? Even today, y'all, as you can tell, it's, it's, it's hotter than it was last time. But the HVAC guy came today. He found all the problems. He's going to fix it tomorrow on Sunday. You'll have to wear a fur coat because it'll be nice and cold in here. Amen. And, and watch this. And because it was hot, the monitors are popping off and stuff is shutting down. But how many of you know that Jesus is still Lord? Yeah. Amen. And, and, and we're going to realize, I think we said this before, that one of the reasons why adversity comes is because adversity knows your potential. Y'all didn't hear me now. Well, one of the reasons why the enemy fights so hard uh, against us is because he actually knows something that we're not well acquainted about, and that is he knows that if he doesn't resist us, and if we don't have resistance, then who we naturally are will break forth. Come on, y'all. But what he also doesn't know, as the Bible says, if Satan only had known, he would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Because how many of you know that when you, when you pierce a believer, when you punch a believer, when you come at a believer, whatever is in there is going to come out. Amen? And, and, and that's what we're learning. We're learning to, to put ourselves in a position for what God placed on the inside of us for it to come out. Amen? Y'all ready for this? All right, let's get right into the word. Open up your notes. As you notice that here at the family church, we give you notes. Why do we give you notes, family? Tell our first time attenders and everybody on Facebook Live because you have homework. And those of you on Facebook Live, you can go to our website, www.thefamilychurchnj, and you can go on and actually get the notes and follow along with us. Amen. All right, well, so let's get right into the word. Uh, turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And as you know, this is Q&A Wednesday. At the end of the message, uh, we'll leave a little bit of time for people to ask questions. So if you have any questions on your heart, if what you heard tonight stirred something on the inside, or if you have a poignant statement, okay, not a soliloquy, I already preached a message, but if you have a poignant statement that you want to share, we'll give you an opportunity to do that. Are you ready? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Are you ready? Come on, let's read. It says what? It says, for what? What are we? It says, for we are God's. Look at this. It says, for we are God's own what? We are God's own handiwork. His what? His workmanship. Look at this. It says what? Recreated in Christ Jesus. What does it say? Born anew that we may do those good works which God did what? Predestined pre-planned beforehand. Keep that right there. See, see, we, we, we talked about potential, and we found out that potential is the uncapped ability. Potential is actually what we have not yet done, but what we are capable of doing. Do you understand what that scripture implies that you just read? We found out that our potential, don't be afraid, is God. Come on, I need you to jump in now. I know you had a rough day, but come on, let's, let's deal with some truth. Y'all ready? We found out that our potential is what? Is God. And, and as the scripture says here, it says, look, it says that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand. So watch this. We have potential because we have a purpose. And watch this. How many of you know that your life is never supposed to, nothing is supposed to happen. And we say this, you know, we say this all the time in church them without having good revelation. We say, well, you know, the Lord, this is my slave voice. Well, you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways. You never know what he's going to do. Well, that's not what the word says. The word says that, first of all, he knew you before you knew you. The word says before anything bad ever happened in your life. You were good. 
The word says that before you were formed in your mother's belly, he said, I knew you, I predestined you, I called you out, I gave you a purpose. That scripture, Jeremiah 1.5, changed my life. Because watch this, what, what that scripture implies and what this revelation impri- implies, that the worst thing that ever happened to you from God's perspective was already too late. Yes. Y'all didn't hear me, I'm coming over here. That, that, the wor- that, that the thing that you have a tendency without this revelation to identify yourself with happened too late. God said, I already knew you. I already planned you, already had a plan for you. So therefore, the abortion, the rape, the what, what, what else, the, the firing, the divorce, it all happened too late. It all happened after I knew you, after I named you, after I planned you, after I purposed you, and after I put my potential on the inside of you. So, so, so we got we to get this because when you tap into your potential, you actually realize that the worst thing that somebody could do is bust you open. Because if you bust me open, all you're going to get is what God planned. So, so, so this is amazing. And this is why I said that some of us, and, and I'm going to start a new series on, on uh, Sunday. I'm going to give you a shameless plug. It's called Bully. It's called Bully. You know, not bullying. It's called bully. And, and the Lord shared with me, he said, you know what? Most of us don't have the revelation that Christ has about spiritual warfare or about a fight. See, we don't see when you hear the word bully, you think of somebody bad. But how many of you know that Jesus was a bully to the enemy? Y'all not hearing me. How many of you know that, that Jesus bullied all of the d- demonic forces, bullied Satan, anybody that came at him, he was a bully to them. No, not hear me. See, the reason why he was a bully, because he knew he had an unfair advantage and he used it. Come on, can I talk to you? What would your life be like if you knew that you were supposed to be a spiritual bully to the enemy? You know what you would do? You would allow the potential of God and the success that he placed on the inside of you to not be an excuse. Come on now. See, see, we often use the thing that we're going through as an excuse why we're not being who we are. See, but, but when we get a revelation of our potential, you'll have the same mindset that, that, that Jesus had when it came to, to the devil. He bullied him. Y'all hear me? I'll tell you about that on Sunday, but, 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 but I'm exposing that because you have no idea who you are. And watch this. If you're not operating as a bully to the enemy, then you just keep getting punked. Come on now. Y'all are going to be a punk or a bully. Come on now. Y'all didn't like that. Y'all still wrestling with them words. You're either going to be a punk in the spirit or you're going to be a bully in the spirit. And if you know where you come from and you know who, you dad, who your dad is, you ain't going to be no punk. You're going to bully the enemy. Come on now. Just trying to talk to you. Trying to wake you up. Some of y'all are in a spiritual coma because you don't know who you are and you don't know what he planned and you don't know what he put in you. How we doing? We all right? Come on, next verse. It says what? Watch this. Look, it says what? It says what? For what? For us, read with me. It says for us taking past, which what? Which he prepared. Look at this. When? Ahead of time. Do you understand that when you know who you are, nothing should catch you by surprise, even if you get surprised? Y'all hear me? Nothing should catch you by surprise, even if you get surprised. If you get surprised, oh, I didn't know that was happening, but the Lord did. Let me go ahead and and tap in. Look at this. It says what? It says, for us taking paths, which what? Which he prepared, what? Ahead of time, read with me, that we should walk in them. Read. Come on, y'all. Y'all don't even want y'all scared. Let's read. It says what? Living the good life, which he has. Are y'all catching this? See, your potential has already been pre-planned and pre-arranged, and your life has already been set. So you got to ask yourself, well, why am I not living this life? Because I don't know my potential. But when I tap in, this is my life. Somebody say, I'm ready to tap in. Come on, let's read. It says what? It says what? That we should what? Walk in them, living what? The good life, which he what? Prearranged, come on, and made ready for us to live. Are y'all, y'all getting me now? Y'all, y'all getting this? 
See, see, like I said, many of us, because we don't allow our minds to be renewed to the truth. Let, let, let me say this. I'm, I'm just flowing. Can I just flow? See, see, Jesus gave a doctrinal dissertation on Satan when he said, and he said it, he said it in three words, Satan is a liar. Y'all hear me? This is what he, this is what Jesus shared about your only enemy. He said what? Satan is. Not that he does lie. He is a liar. So do you know that most of the things that you hear from this world system that are connected to him are not even true? Most of the things that you believe about yourself, if you haven't renewed your mind, are not even true. See, this is why I say this is how we get pumped because we haven't renewed our mind to the truth of our potential and we believe a liar. How are we doing? Come on, let's read our introduction. It says what? It says, when God created human beings, read with me, it says what? He intended for us to share in his divine nature. It says what? And live out a prearranged plan and purpose for our lives. How many of you know if you realize that your life was prearranged and preplanned by God, my Father, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, he doesn't run out, he doesn't lack anything. Thing. He never gets sad, isn't depressed, ain't taking pills for nothing. Come on, I'm, I'm not messing with you if you are taking pills, but what I'm telling you is that's not your potential. See, see, if we get that revelation, we will start resisting the lies and start tapping into the truth. Somebody say, I need to resist the lies and I need to start tapping into the truth. Come on, let's read. It says what? It says today what? Y'all with me? It says today we will discover, read me what does it say? That our potential, oh, I love this. Look at it says, our potential is so powerful. This is what we talked about last week. That it's not, it is not what we need to do in order to realize it, but what we must stop doing in order to uncover it. No. See, we, we tapped into that last week because how many of you know that most of us, well, what I need to do, what I got to do, what I got to do. What must I do? You know, y'all reading books and, and you're going to conferences and, and you want somebody to spit on you. And you need someone to give you a prophylly. You know, what, do I, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Do you realize that you are so powerful and your potential is so great? It's not what are you going to do. It's if you just stop doing this, who you really are would break forth. And that is why your enemy is a liar. Because if he can continue to keep you doing things that you weren't designed to do, he can stop you from being you. How are we doing? We all right? So come on, here's our definition of potential. We've been working this this third week. We've been working on it. Let's read it. It says what? Potential is what? Dormant ability. What is it? Reserve power, untapped strength, unused success, hidden talents, and capped ability. And remember, without tapping in, what, what do we find ourselves? Dormant, reserved, untapped, unused, hidden, and capped. When actually I am able, powerful, strong, successful, talented, and capable. See, it, and, and this is why this is so important. And the, you know what the Lord told me, if y'all anybody knows me? He said, Teddy, slow down. He said, I need you to walk them through this because the reality is, is the enemy is so afraid of you. Do y'all you, hear me? He is so afraid. Again, many of us are sitting in our chairs. And like I say, all the time we read the scriptures and we focus more on the jacked up people than the savior. We identify with the person that needs to be saved instead of the one who came to save, not realizing that he came to save so you can save, not be saved. And, and, and so, so this is important that, that, that we really allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. Because watch this. I'm telling you, that as we shared before, you know, the, the Lord shared with us that 2018, what is this? This is the year of momentum. It means that God has already moved, and therefore you should have great expectation. What month is this? This is the sixth month. I'm going to keep ministering to you. We are at the halfway mark. 
See, and how many of you know at the halfway mark, I don't know if, I, I don't know if I got any, any track runners or track watchers, but, but at the halfway mark, they say the monkey jumps on your back. Any, anybody ever see somebody running a, a, a 400? I remember we, I was, we were in track and we used to, we used to watch it. You see somebody just bust out and they just, <laughs> and we sit there, don't, don't worry, the monkey's coming. And, and I was like, well, what's the monkey? And they said, watch this. Dude was going around, and he got almost to the halfway mark, and they said, look, there he is over there. Jump. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> Boom. Right when he got to the halfway mark, he started getting tired. See, see, because the reality is if you don't know what's in you, your circumstance start preaching to you. If you don't know what you're really capable of, your circumstances start to dictate and tell you, yo, can you make it all the way around? You know, and instead of realizing, what do you mean can I make it all the way around? What's in me made all the way around. Let me say that again. What do you mean can I make it all the way around? What's in me made all the way around? And this is what God wants us to constantly remember. Do you know who you are? And you must begin to realize what you are capable of. Because the reality is, is the enemy can't beat you. He uses you to beat you. I'll say that again. The enemy cannot beat you. He uses the only thing that can stop you, which is not him. I'll talk about this on Sunday because you were not created in the angelic class. You were created in the God class. Angels were created underneath you, believe it or not. That's why God says that I'm going to sit here on my throne until my enemy is made my footstool. Who, guess who's supposed to crush his enemy's head? Your feet. But guess what? If you, you think that your enemy was created above you, then you don't realize that just by being you, you beat him. All right, I'm just popping off. Is this all right? We okay? Come on. All right, let's read. It says what? It says, watch this. So we started, last time we were together, we began to talk about the enemies of our potential. Or in other words, we began to find out, well, what are the things that I need to stop doing so I can begin to be me? And, and like I said, that, that, please get that in your heart, that my potential is, I'm just I keep saying it again, my potential is so great that it's not what I need to do, it's what I need to stop doing. That will release who I really am. And we found out last week, y'all remember we started out with number one? We'll, we'll, we'll get to number two today. But we found out that number one was what? Y'all remember? Number one was disobedience. Okay? And, and watch this. Here's a statement I, I didn't share with you last week. But come on, let's read it together. It says what? It says, you cannot become, here's your fill-in, who God created you to be if you persist in rebelling against him. This is really important. See, see, watch this. And I said something really important last time we were together that sounds blasphemous, but, it, but it's not blasphemous when you know who you are. And y'all remember I said that you weren't created to obey God. You were created to be like God. Let me say that again. You weren't created to obey God. You were created to be like God. And when you operate like God, obedience just comes natural. And so, so watch this. So therefore, you can't keep rebelling against him and expect to be you. Y'all hear me? You, you can't keep re rebelling against God and expect to be who you really are. You want to know why? Because I said it. You, weren't, you were created to be like God. So watch this. Look what it says here. It says, it's the what? It's the little foxes. That spoil the vine. Jesus shared this. And, and, and oftentimes I say, well, what's he talking about? The little foxes. Write this down. It's your private life that ruins your public life. Y'all not hearing me now. It, it's your private life. Some of y'all don't even want to make eye contact. It's, it's your private life that ruins the public life. It's the little foxes. See, understand that disobedience is not making a mistake. Y'all hear me? A mistake is when you did something wrong intending to do right. Come on now. Y'all hear me? A mistake is when you did something wrong, but what were your intentions? To do right. That's called a mistake. See, but disobedience, disobedience, you knew you were wrong when you did it, 
And while you were doing it, it felt good enough to keep going. And, and, and see, see, this is important, but most of our disobedience, people don't see it. Y'all hear me? The majority of our disobedience, and, it's, and I'm talking about the stuff that stops you from being you. People don't see it. That's why Jesus said, no, no, it's the little foxes. You don't see little foxes as they're just eating all up underneath the, the grapes. They're, they're nibbling at the vine. They're destroying. Watch this. How many of you know that, that, that you can nibble at a root system and the plant can stay green for a very long time? But, but when you finally bite through, it dies. And so, so oftentimes, you know, we think that, you know what, nobody sees or I'm still bearing fruit, but you don't realize that's mercy. Y'all, y'all hear me? See, and this is important. Never, 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 never begin to believe that mercy means it's okay. How are we doing? See, see, God's mercy is not, is not God's permission. God's mercy is not God's winking. God's mercy is mercy. Mercy is, you know what, I love you so much, and Joker, you know you're wrong. You know you're wrong, so I'm believing in you and believing that my love for you is great enough that that's enough to get you to stop. Come on now. See, and and this is why this is so important, and this is why this is the the first thing that we're talking about that stops my potential. It's me knowing that I know better. Knowing, watch this, and and some of y'all, I'm not talking about nasty stuff. Y'all know nasty is nasty. (laughs) I'm talking about the things that God told you to do. You know you're capable of doing it, and you just decide I'm not. And I'm going to tell you why you say you're not. Because you believe that the price is too great. Come on now. You you, you say, no, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to be responsible to that level. See, but the reality is, is that so therefore you actually numb yourself to being who you really are. How are we doing? Is this making sense? Come on. So so let's talk about number two. Number two is where I want to focus on today. Number two is is what's number two? So the first one is what? Is disobedience, and how many of you know that oftentimes disobedience opens the door to fear? Y'all, y'all hear me? Because watch this. The Bible says that, that perfect love casts out all fear. And, and watch this. Love always needs to be tested. And love will always be tested with will you obey or not? Y'all hear me? And so when we decide that we don't want to obey, really because we don't trust love, it opens the door to fear. How are we doing? So, so, so write this down. You, you've heard this before. What is fear? Mm, that sounds bad. What is fear? Fear is what? False evidence appearing real. And what did I say that, that the enemy is? He's a what? He's a liar. And because he's a liar, he's always giving you false evidence to cause it to appear real But false evidence can only appear real where truth is not known. Y'all hear me? False evidence can... Y'all ain't even writing down. Just looking at me. It's all right. It'll smack you in the face when you get outside. (laughs) False evidence can only appear real wherever truth is not known. And see, see, write this down. that, That fear is not an emotion. Fear is not a feeling. I need you to get this. Now, fear gets into your emotions, and fear gets into your feelings, but y'all listen to me. Fear is a spirit. I'm going to say that again. Fear is not an emotion. Fear is not a feeling. Fear gets into your emotions. Fear gets into your feelings, but what is fear? Come on. Fear is a spirit. Now, watch this. Fear is a spirit that knows your potential and knows your purpose. Y'all hear me? Fear is a spirit that knows your potential and it knows your purpose and therefore it is going after you to cause you to receive false evidence that appears real that causes you not to be who you're supposed to be. How are we doing? 
Come on, let's look at this. It says what? It says what? The dangers of, watch this, circle the word living. The dangers of what? Of living with your fears. See, you, you got to be careful. And this is why the Lord told me to take my time and to share this correctly because a lot of us have convinced ourselves that fear is just a feeling. Fear is just an emotion. You know what? It'll pass. Well, it, the feeling might pass, but the spirit will stay right there with you. And, and so it's important that we understand this because if you don't realize what you're dealing with or what you are allowing it will stay in your life and you will live with it. Y'all hear me? So, so fear will stop your potential. Fear will stop you from being who you were created to be. Fear is the reason why some of you wake up mad and frustrated and, and angry and, and, and upset. But watch this. It's because you won't walk out in who you really are because you're afraid. And the reason why you're afraid is because you keep living with it. Come on, let me, let me show this. Job chapter, and it's like, oh, Lord, we're going to Job. Job chapter 1. Yep, we're going to Job. Job chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. And watch this, and, and here's the danger, because it is possible, because watch, please, please, if you don't get anything else, please hear that fear is a spirit. And so the spirit of fear is very subtle, it's very crafty, it's very cunning, and the spirit of fear is an expert to get you to allow it to live with him. Y'all hear me? You know, so, so much so that we come up with nice words. We, we hate the word fear, so we just come up with, I'm, I'm doubtful. You know, I'm not afraid, I just, I just have doubts. That's all. Everyone doubts. You know, or I'm just hesitant. Come on now, I'm talking to you. I'm prophetical up here right now. Or, or you know, the Bible says we must use wisdom. Not if God told you to do something. See, that's not called using wisdom. That's called being disobedient because you're afraid to do what he said and you call it something else because you've been living with fear so long that you've come up with cute words to make it comfortable for you. But the only thing that happens is you never live out your potential. Come on, let's read. It says what? And what? And in the land of Uz, what? There lived a man whose name, y'all, come on, don't be afraid. Y'all ain't even reading with me because y'all know where it's going. <laughs> there lived what? There lived a man whose name was what? Was Job. It says what? This man was, oh, come on, get this. Let's read slow. He was what? He was blameless and he was upright. Watch this. And, and what? And he feared God and shunned Eve. Praise the Shanana. That's amazing. Now watch this. That's not a lie. That's the truth. It says here that he was blameless. In, in other words, he didn't do anything intentional. That's what blameless means. Y'all understand that? It's not perfect. It means that you can't cast any blame on him because he has no ill intentions. So it says here, he's blameless and upright. And watch here. And that word fear actually is reverence. He reverenced God. And, and look at this. And what did he do? And he shunned evil. Let's keep reading. It says what? Keep reading. It goes on. It says what? And he had seven sons and three daughters. Keep reading. Come on, come on. It says what? And he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and a large number of servants. So what was he? Rich. Y'all hear me? He was rich. He was successful. Y'all hear me? See, see, watch this. If you ever lose sight of the source of your success, success will make you fearful. Oh my God, come on now. If you ever lose sight of the source of your success, success will make you fearful. Why? Because I'll try to hold on to my success instead of realizing that I'm not the source of it anyway. It says here, watch this, 
Next verse, it says what? And he what? And he was what? The greatest man among all the people of the East. Verse 4. And look at this. Watch this. It says his sons used what? Used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthdays, and they would invite three sisters to do what? To eat and drink with them. Verse 5. And it says what? And when a period of feasting had run its course, it says what? Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Look at this. It says what? Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them. Watch this. Thinking, because keep it right there, because you're going to find out that fear is not in your actions. Fear is in your thinking. You hear me? See, if you, if you do fearful actions, it's because fear is already in your mind. So watch this. Next verse. So, so this is what he's thinking. Read with me. It says what? Perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And it says what? And this was Job's what? Regular custom. Now, you got to get this. So, so here's what happened with Job. Job was successful. Job had many children. Job had a lot of fame. Job had a lot of stuff. But Job had a little fear. And, and this is the amazing part, and this is, this, is, this is where the enemy can creep in if you lose sight of your source, is you will begin to have fear in areas of your life that you can't control. See, watch this. If you lose sight of who the source is, you'll start to be fearful in areas of your life that you can't control. How many of you know, come on, talk to me, look at me in your eyes, you can't control them kids. Come on now. I'm looking at you. You can't control your kids. All you can do is raise them up in the way that they should go and give them to the Lord. That's what your mom and daddy did with you. And you look at you, you know, you was trifling and look at you now. I mean, you don't have to say amen. I know it's right. But, but watch this, but listen to me, whether it's your kids or anything, when you are successful and then you start to forget who the source of your success is, fear can creep in in the areas of your life that you can't control. Stuff that you can't control, you try to control and fear gets in. And so watch this. It says, so therefore, this man who had a relationship with God, who was blessed by God, got religious. Come on now. And so watch this. So now he has customs. You know, as, as a matter of fact, in some passage of scripture, it says he did this religiously. But watch this. He did this out of fear. Job 3, 23. And, and, and as you know the story, what happened to Job? Bad stuff. But, but how many of you know why bad stuff happened to Job? Who knows why bad things happened to Job? Because he had an enemy. Y'all remember the scripture? It goes on and talks about the fact that, that Satan came before the Lord and said, yo, let me have him. I'm, the only reason why he does good for you is because you keep protecting him. And the Lord actually says, well, behold. In other words, you don't, can't really see because he's already in your hands. But let me tell you what you can and cannot do. And so the scripture says that, that the enemy began to attack him. But how many of you know that when pressure comes, remember we, we found out that, that the way that you make a diamond, y'all remember, is what? Pressure, heat, and time. When pressure, heat, and time comes in, what you really are is what will be revealed. Y'all hear me? When, when pressure, heat, and time comes in, what you really are will get revealed, or what's in abundance on the inside will come out. Come on, y'all. How are we doing? I know I'm right in your house. Let's look at it. It says what? Job 3, 23. And so here's Job. It says what? And so, so here's, so, so pressure, heat, and time comes in. Calamity comes in Job's house. And let's read. It says what? Why is life given to a man? This is what Job starts thinking. This is what some of y'all think. Come on now. It says what? Whose way is hidden. Let's read. It says what? Whom God has hedged in. See, see, he doesn't realize that the hedge was actually a protection. Next verse, it says what? For what? For sighing has come, what? Has become my daily food. Come on, come on now. See, how many of you have been here? This is called depression. Come on now, don't be afraid. Some of y'all looking around and know your hands should have been in here. 
When, 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 look at it. It says, when sighing becomes your daily food. See, that's why, that's why I was excited that we started the way that, that we, we did, just worshiping God, because that's supposed to be, your, your praise is, is really supposed to be your weapon. See, but when you lose sight of your potential and who your source is, instead of being who you're supposed to be, when pressure, heat, and time, all you do is complain and sigh. How we doing? It says what here? It says what? My groans pour out like water. Verse 25, it says what? What was it say? What I, you got to get this, so here it is. Read this slow. It says what, what came out of his mouth. He says what? What I feared. And in some translation, it says what I feared the most. He says what I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. Let's read it. It says what? But fear, it says fear, watch this, when we focus our faith on what we are afraid of. Y'all hear me? That's the definition, really that's the definition of fear. Fear is when you focus your faith on what you're afraid of. Fear is faith in what you're afraid of. Because understand this, you are a faith creature. Whatever you fear, you empower it to be in your life. Y'all hear me? See, see, like I said, you don't even realize that the enemy isn't even doing that to you. He just presents it to you. And if you don't have the word of God and the truth, you will use your faith in reverse and you will empower what you are afraid of. It says, look here. It says, watch this. It says, we what? We empower that which we fear to happen. Read me. It says what? Instead, we must focus our faith on what God declares, which is our unseen reality to be. I'm telling you, you keep saying it ain't going to work. That's why. You keep believing nothing good can happen to you. That's why. Because your potential is so great, it's not what you need to do, it's what you need to stop doing. How we doing? Look at this, come on. 1 John 4, 16 through 17, let's read. It says what? It says what? And what? And we what? And we know and understand what it say. We recognize what? Are conscious of what? By observation and by experience and believe and adhere to and put faith in and rely on. That's where we started. The love that God cherishes for us. See, watch this. The one thing that kicks out fear is love. But it's only the love that you have faith in. See, watch this. We're actually supposed, you know what's supposed, the Bible actually says this. When it talks about faith, you know, all these faith preachers, faith, 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 but don't nobody love. Come on, talk to me. Faith is not for just to get stuff. The Bible says that faith which worketh by love. So it is the love of God that empowers your faith. And it is the love of God that casts out fear because when you have faith in God's love for you, you can't stay afraid. Y'all hear me? We're we just talking. Come on, look, next verse. It says what? It says, what does it say? It says who? It says what? It says God has love. God wants to love you. Come on, come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. I know you want some love. It says what? It says God is love. It says what? And what? And he who dwells, look at, come on, and what? What does the word continue mean? It actually implies that you can stop even though he won't. See, you have to allow his love to continue. You have to continue to have faith in his love. It says what? He who continues in love, what? Dwells and continues in God, and God dwells, and what? And continues in him. Read with me. It says what? Verse 17. It says what? In this, look at this. See, see, this is all, it's always, you're going to keep hearing this at the family church, it's always about a relationship. He's not a sugar daddy. He's not a wizard. He's not Santa Claus. 
Come on, I say this all the time, what you call a relationship, who knows the rest of this statement? God calls a marriage. Do you say, I'm in a relationship with God? God says, no, we're in a marriage. We're married. Let's read. It says what? In this union, read with me, and communion with him, love is brought to completion and what? And attains perfection with us. Come on. So like, wait a second. Why are we talking about love? Because God is love and God is your potential. Y'all hear me? It says what? It says in this union and communion with him, love is what? Love is brought to completion and attains perfection with us. Read me, says what? That we may have what? Confidence for the day of judgment. In other words, when the enemy comes to attack, what is your faith in? Is your faith in your potential? Because if your faith is in your potential, your faith is in love, and it doesn't mean you're not going to get attacked, but it means What's in you is going to come out when you get attacked. Let's read. It says what? Next verse or, or next part. It says what? With what? With assurance and boldness to do what? To face him because as he is, so are we where? In this world. We're going to finish this part uh, on, on uh, and we'll, we'll finish next week. But let's read. It says what? The next, next part. It says what? Faith what? Faith what? Faith which is our God-given mode of operation. Look at this. Read with me. Does what? Here's your feeling. It combats fear and releases our potential. Watch this. When you have faith in God's love, see, because watch this. Do you know what is the worst thing that the enemy could do to you? Kill you. You hear me? But what does love do to you if you die? Brings you back. Y'all hear me? I mean, even if, I, even if, you, if somebody shot me right now, shot me dead, I'm coming back. Amen. Amen. See, but watch this. We say amen, amen, but what is the thing that you're supposed to do, but you're afraid it'll kill you if you do it? You're afraid you'll lose your name if you do it. You're afraid you'll lose some money if you do it. Watch this. Here's the biggest one. You're afraid that people won't like you. If you do it. And so what God is saying is it's time for you to have more faith in me than you have fear of man. Come on, let's read. It says what? It says faith, which is our God-given mode of operation, what does it say? Combats fear. Come on. And what? And releases our potential. It says what? The person who walks in fear, come on, here's your feeling, will never know what he or she could have done. Y'all are with me. Come on, here's the last statement. Let's read. It says what? It says the person who what? Who fears God will have nothing else to fear and will soon realize that all things are possible to the one who what? Who believes in God. Did you get anything out of this today? Glory to God. Well, Father, we give you...